In the current day and age, it is difficult to find a gaming PC in the wild. Unfortunately, their population has been dwindling due to over poaching from crypto miners and scalpers and an unfortunate global virus that has hindered their reproduction rate. It is no surprise that spotting one in the wild is a rare occurrence. Truly a sad sight indeed for a species that was once abundant just a couple of years ago. It seems that luck is upon us however as we have spotted a gaming PC strutting in the wild. It is however very likely to be overpriced. Uh, wait, uh, what? Uh huh. Reasonably priced components? Everything considered about 573 US dollars or 2,400 ringgit for an RTX 3060? <laughs> what? That's actually not too bad. <sighs> well, this particular beast in the wild looks like it may be an interesting specimen for the rodent to study. Now let's first start with the most important detail. How much does it cost? So the whole bundle will set you back 8,200 ringgit or just shy of 2,000 US dollars. Okay, <laughs> don't freak out. Take a deep breath. Calm yourself. You know, you okay? Good. Now I'm going to tell you why that isn't really such a bad deal. You see, the bundle comes with a 27-inch 144Hz 1080p IPS monitor, the MSI Optics G272, the MSI GK30 Mecha Membrane Gaming Keyboard, and the MSI GM11 Gaming Mouse. The MSI MPG Trident AS11TG that I'm looking at today comes with an Intel Core i7-11700F, a low-profile CPU cooler, a single stick of 16GB DDR4-2666, a 1TB Western Digital NVMe SSD, the MSI B560i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, a 450W FSP 80 Plus Bronze SFX Pro power supply, an MSI RTX 3060 Ventus 2X and all of this in a mini ITX case. If I were to break this bundle down based on their local pricing here and where I don't exactly have the same product, I choose a similar competing product. All of this means that you're paying about 2,400 ringgit for the RTX 3060, which makes it more than 1,000 ringgit less than some options in the open market. The best part about the AS11TG is that it doesn't use any proprietary parts. That means that you can pretty much use the parts in a different build if you wish, or even build an entirely new system in the chassis of the Trident AS. Oh, by the way, the case comes with a steel panel for the CPU side pre-installed, but they also provide a tempered glass panel in the box, so you can swap it out if you want to, but while the steel panel sits flush with the frame, the tempered glass panel has a 5mm gap around the edges, which should help with airflow, but let more dust in. The tempered glass panel is nice, it opens via hinges and is kept shut via magnets, though it does require installing the hinges as they're incompatible with the steel panel and aren't pre-installed. On that note of dust though, the case doesn't have any dust filters, so that's probably going to be a problem if you live in a very dusty environment, and the case is purely intake only, so positive air pressure, with cool air coming from the CPU, the GPU and PSU fans, and exhausting passively above the case, so yeah. So a lot of pre-builds have problems of even powering on out of the box, you know, with like loose or damaged components or cables or whatever, but I'm happy to say that I didn't run into any of that as the PC powered on just fine. I did however run into a little bit of issues when it came to audio, you know, no sound and whatnot, but that was fixed by installing the latest Nvidia drivers, so not exactly a perfect plug and play experience out of the box, unfortunately. It comes with Windows 10 Home pre-installed, though it was running an older 20H2 build, which I updated to 21H1 for this review, and the SSD was partitioned into an OS partition and data partition. Pre-builds usually mean pre-installed software, and yes, this PC does have some, but surprisingly they're not that bad. 
Yes, you get Norton Security pre-installed, which I don't really like. But aside from that, you get MSI Center, which is pretty bare bones, to be honest. I mean, it doesn't even have the Mystic Lighting module installed by default. And you're going to have to enable and load that in in order to control the PCs, RGBs. And you have Nahemic Sound Enhancer and Microsoft Office. And that's just it. Pretty bare bones if you ask me, so... I'm very pleased with this. The Western Digital SN530 inside isn't a top-of-the-line NVMe SSD, but I believe that for the purposes of standard gaming and streaming, it should be perfectly adequate with a sequential read of about 2,244 megabytes per second and a write of 1,945 megabytes per second. So out of the box, the CPU runs at a long-term power limit of 65 watts. This has an impact on scores in apps like Cinebench and Blender, and we can remove that power limit in the BIOS by maybe setting it to something like, you know, 170 watts instead. We see this in the Cinebench scores for both stock 65 watts and with the limits lifted. While this significantly boosts the scores in multi-thread applications, it also significantly increases the operating temperatures with the CPU hitting a maximum of 100 Celsius and the MOSFETs a very uncomfortable maximum of 96.5 Celsius. It also thermal throttled unsurprisingly and maxed out at only 163 watts. So the results you're looking at here is with the 11700F running at 163 watts. It shouldn't be surprising that a machine that is catered towards space conscious gamers isn't performing as well in productivity workloads. With a low profile, small form factor, top down cooler uh, for the 11700F, this machine just isn't built for that. That's not to say that it can't do it, of course, but it still won't perform as well as a purpose-built machine. That said, moving the components into a larger case with a beefier cooler will probably solve that issue, but as for how it is, this is pretty much just how many ITX machines are. Compromises have to be made. If you wanted more performance, however, I would keep it to at about you know 130 watts or so, as I find that to be a reasonable amount for this system. In stock configuration, however, the CPU didn't thermal throttle at all, and the CPU hit a maximum of only about 70 Celsius at all times, which is perfectly cool. While increasing the power limits in something like DaVinci Resolve will greatly improve the encoding times if you're using the native software renderer that uses the CPU, you can get less than half of that time by just using the RTX 3060 inside instead to do all of the rendering using NVENC. So this is again another case where I feel that removing the power limits isn't really all that beneficial. For what this machine is designed for, that is gaming, the MSI Trident AS11TG does really well. FPS remained the same regardless of whether the CPU was running at 65 watts or 163 watts, which meant that the RTX 3060 inside wasn't being bottlenecked by the CPU in its stock configuration. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla under the 1080p ultra high preset, we got an average of 60 FPS, a 1% low of 42 FPS, and a 0.1% low of 35 FPS. The CPU and GPU were both respectably cool all the while, never topping 70 Celsius, so that's pretty awesome. In Horizon Zero Dawn under the 1080p ultimate quality preset, we got an average FPS of 88, a 1% low of 63, and a 0.1% low of 57, except that this time the GPU breached slightly above 70, but ever so slightly. In a less GPU intensive title like Rainbow Six Siege, under the 1080p 100% render scale ultra preset, we got an average of 279 FPS, a 1% low of 222 FPS, and a 0.1% low of 189 FPS, which again, in my testing, I saw no difference in between running the CPU at 65 watts or 163 watts. Temperatures, however, were a little bit higher this time, by a few Celsius breaking into the 70 Celsius mark. 
We finally test in Shadow of the Tomb Raider under the 1080p highest quality TAA preset and the system got 99 FPS average, a 1% low of 60 and a 0.1% low of 29. Again, temperatures were quite alright, hovering about 70 Celsius plus minus a few degrees. I also did some additional testing for the temperatures with open air, the steel side panel on, and the glass side panel on, and compiled them into this chart here. This testing was all done while stress testing the CPU and GPU uh, in the Blender Victor benchmark, and this is where it got interesting. Normal wisdom would tell you that because airflow is usually bad in a mini ITX case, that open air would probably be better, but instead I observed the opposite. While there was no difference with the GPU temperatures with the side panel or open air, the temperatures of the CPU with the tempered glass side panel was the best, followed by the steel panel, then totally open air. I know this seems a bit weird, but I double, triple, quadruple, pentuple, yeah. I checked my findings for nearly an hour to make sure that I wasn't imagining things, and I wasn't. Repeatedly, 5 minutes after going from open air to closing the case with the tempered glass side panel, the temperatures would drop by like 4 to 5 Celsius. So this is what I think is going on. When the CPU side is running open air, the CPU cooler is also taking in heat generated by the VRMs, the MOSFETs and the chokes around it, recycling that hot air rather than taking in new fresh air. This changes with a steel side panel installed as the proximity of the CPU fan and the grill on the side panel allows it to take in more fresh air from the outside and blast it onto the CPU and surrounding components. That hot air however still can't escape easily as it only exhausts via the vent above it and this is where that is again completely remedied in the glass side panel. You see, because of the design of the glass side panel not sitting fully flush with the frame of the case, those gaps also serve as additional exhaust fans for the system and so the hot air can easily escape from all four sides and indeed this is what I observed when placing my hand around the edges. So yeah, kinda counterintuitive to popular wisdom, in this case, pun intended, using the tempered glass side panel looks better and also cools the system better. Noise levels are generally okay as well. When idle, it's obviously pretty silent, but the moment you push it, it is audible and while you're not going to probably get as silent as a full-on tower cooler, it's still not that bad. To me, it was somewhat on par with a performance laptop. Now let's take the Trident AS11TG apart to take a look at the parts and, well, discuss the upgrade paths. Now you've probably noticed it by now but the insides of the case isn't painted at all so it's just this exposed steel silver. I really do wish that they had painted it as it would have looked a lot better especially when using the tempered glass side panel. The easiest form of upgrade can be seen on the CPU side in the form of two 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive slots. The power cables that you need are right beside the caddies and the SATA data cables and screws necessary are provided in the box with the case, so no need for anything extra. The second easiest upgrade I would say is replacing the CPU fan with something like maybe higher airflow for better cooling. Replacing the GPU would probably come in third, but you would also need to remove the top panel and the side panel with a screwdriver, then unscrew the GPU from the top to remove it. You're also limited to a GPU that is 55mm thick and 300mm long at maximum, taking up only two rear I.O. slots and use a maximum of two PCIe 8-pin power plugs. You're also probably going to want to get a more powerful PSU as 450 watts is probably not going to cut it if you decide to upgrade. You can also see the second M.2 slot on the motherboard here, which you can use to slip in another NVMe SSD for an easy upgrade. 
things start to get a little bit more complicated from here as upgrading the CPU involves removing the CPU fan, then undoing the four screws holding the low profile cooler in place. From there, we can easily swap out the CPU. With the CPU cooler removed, we have access to the M.2 NVMe slot hiding beneath it and we also now have access to our RAM slots and if you decide to replace the single stick with something else, bear in mind that the total dim height can only be a maximum of 35mm in height or it will not clear the CPU cooler. Speaking of CPU cooler, we get a good look at the cooler used to keep the processor in check and it's a 5 heat pipe design and has a total height of 68.5mm. If you're using the steel panel, then the maximum height should be about 70mm, uh, 75 if you're using the glass panel. I know this because I managed to get away with the 75mm high PC cooler U4D using the glass panel. Uh, the review for that one in this PC should be out soon after. So check that video out if you're interested in seeing if we can improve the thermos in the Trident AS. With that out of the way, we can easily remove the daughter board that doubles as a PCIe riser by undoing two screws holding it in place, then removing it from the PCIe bracket and unplugging any of the uh, cables connected to it. Next in line is the PSU and to do so, you're going to need to flip the case on its side and undo the four screws holding the PSU in place. Remove the cables from the cable management loops first, then once it's loose and out, remove the power cable extension, then the 24-pin motherboard power. We can see without this assembly that it's an SFX unit made by FSP, the FSP450-50AC SFX Pro, which is an 80 plus 450 watt bronze unit. Lastly is the motherboard and I start by removing all the header plugs on the motherboard like USB, front panel, audio and finally undo the four screws in all four corners holding the motherboard in place. Don't get too trigger happy and rip the entire board off as the Wi-Fi chip is still connected to the case and so we need to remove that by undoing two screws, one for the IO shielding and another holding the Wi-Fi chip in place, then gently wiggle the Wi-Fi chip out and set it aside. I know that I mentioned before that this board is the MSI B560i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi and indeed that's what it says in the BIOS and in Windows but it has very distinct differences to its retail counterpart. For starters, it has none of the internal heat spreaders that you would normally get on this board, a totally different backplate, one that is more basic and lacking wireless antennas as this system uses the built-in patch antennas on the case rather than two sticks down the back and despite showing up as a B560i gaming edge Wi-Fi in BIOS and Windows, it uses a different BIOS to a normal B560i gaming edge Wi-Fi so you can't update it normally, I tried. To me, this is probably the most disappointing part about this build. I can see why they did it, but it still feels like I'm getting a lesser product here, especially since I don't get any heat spreaders at all on this custom model. Through the magic of editing, the Trident is fully assembled once again so that we can get to the conclusions. So I purposely messed up my Facebook ad algorithm, <laughs> the only time Facebook ads are actually useful to serve me ads for pre-built gaming PCs and graphics cards. Every time I see an ad for a pre-built with a 3060, I click into it and compare its value to the Trident AS11TG and to my absolute surprise, not a lot of them are better and in fact, a lot of them are worse than the value of this MSI bundle. I do understand that it's not for everyone though. You're essentially buying a whole gaming setup. But here's the thing. If you've got a rig that is a couple of years old by now with a pretty old monitor as well, then the MSI MPG Trident AS 11TG would be an absolutely amazing deal for you uh, to quickly and easily get a modern gaming PC. Sure, it's definitely kinda overpriced in a normal market, but we're not living in one, are we? Neither have we been for a while. 
and I feel at least neither will we all that soon. So for what it is right now, all things considered, I would consider the MSI MPG Trident AS11TG to be great value if you're in the market for a whole setup and i would definitely recommend it that's the end of the review i'll leave any links that i have in the description if you're interested in checking this guy out as usual like if you liked it if you found it useful share it if you have something to say comment down below and if you like my videos and want to see more well then subscribe and hit the bell icon for any notifications well yeah to get notified for any future videos. My name is Yang, the tech rodent, and I really think that part of the allure for me for this PC is the mini ITX form factor. I just love these small and cute machines. I'll see you guys in the next video.